Well, this week for the Tuesday tutorial, I thought maybe the dolls could stock their kitchen up with some mugs and we didn't even touch a package of clay. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy these are to make. All right, so on camera, I'm just going to make a very basic mug, but a pretty one because I'm using a pretty paper. And then on the blog post, I'll give you some more details for some of the variations I've made. The main tool that you'll need to have is something to build your mug over. And this is the same one that I used when I made the polymer clay mugs a while back. It's a chunk of one inch dowel, and it's covered with parchment paper, like the baking parchment. This is so that our mug doesn't stick th to this if we accidentally get glue on the inside. So we're going to cut our strip of paper. I've got a self chunk of a self-healing mat and hopefully you can see what I'm doing here because I've got to have this where I can see it in order to cut straight. And this is a piece of, ignore my nails, they're a mess by the way. This is a piece of scrapbooking or card making cardstock. It's pretty heavy. It's probably about a 60 pound or 80 pound weight. It's pretty thick. Uh, in the blog post I'll talk to you about how to make a mug if you have a lighter weight paper that you are in love with and want to use. But this is going to be the best one to start with. So we are going to cut a strip. It's 12 inches by 12 inches and this came out of a one of those books of papers that you can get that are all coordinated. And I'm lining up my rule, my gridded ruler so that I can cut off a piece that's one and a quarter inches wide. And yeah, this is a huge pattern. I'm using this on purpose because I want to show you that you can use something with a big pattern. Uh, I am going to decide, let's see, I wish the middle was in the edge, but it's not. So I'll probably use, I think, this end. So on the outside of the paper, I am making a mark on one end with a pencil, in case this line shows, three and three-fourths of an inch from the end, from this end of the paper. Flip the paper over. On the opposite end, I am drawing a line that's three and one quarters inch from the end. This will become very important in a second. On a piece of scrap paper, I'm going to lay my work on, and then I don't need that yet. So, scrap paper. Make sure this is here. And I need to find my scissors. There they are. Now we are going to, just as if you were making curling ribbon and making a bow, just gently on the inside of your paper, do this. Now, roll it around your piece of dowel. Before you put any glue on it, you want to roll it around. What we are doing is we're giving the paper a memory of this round shape. It doesn't matter if we're perfectly straight at this point. We just want to make sure that we have it as tight as we can get it. And see how it holds the memory of, a sh of the shape? That's what we want. Now on the inside, we're going to apply some glue stick. I like glue stick for this because I can spread it out really thin, coat the entire area, and I get a good bond that way. Starting at this line, you're going to work all the way down to the other end. Don't put glue here from that line towards the other end. Now, turn your paper over. This line and down. Put a 
nice thick coat on. Cap the glue stick so you don't ruin your glue stick. We did this the inside first so that in case it's stuck to this, we wouldn't ruin our good side. I like to work on a ceramic tile for this. Now, this end that doesn't have glue on it, that's where we're starting. We're going to run that up big. along here. We are going to roll this as tightly as we can. And since it's wet with glue and we've already run it around there a few times, it should roll pretty well. If it's going crooked, back up and re-roll it. You, you want to make sure this is a nice straight roll. And try not to get any glue on this part that's going to show. Wipe the glue off your fingers. If this is starting to lift, uncap your glue and put more glue there on the very edge. We can also feed some tacky glue down there later. Now, this glue stick needs to dry. If you're making multiple mugs, and I do recommend that you do more than one at a time because the steps all need to dry between, and these are really simple and fun to make, but if you're making multiple ones, let this dry on this dowel for at least five or ten minutes before you take it off. Once it's dried, we'll move on to the next step. So I'm, And this is what our mug will look like. That big design looks really cool. I'm going to let this glue dry, and when it's dry, I'll be back and we'll go to step two. All right, so now we are going to make the base. And off camera, I just used a circle cutter and cut two circles that are just over an inch. I think it said it was one and one sixteenth of an inch. And I cut out a plain white cardstock. You could use the same cardstock, but I didn't really want to ruin my whole sheet of cardstock by making a, taking a chunk out of the corner. So, and don't get a hair in it. <laughs> And we're going to glue two of these together. That way we have um, a double layer. I have hair stuck to myself. All right, so we're lined up. Now we're going to slide this off. And because the parchment paper and we measured and didn't get glue on the inside, both of those things allow us to get this off nice and cleanly. I had glue on my finger. So now we are going to put a very thin bead of glue around whichever is going to be your bottom side. And if glue runs down, it's better it runs down the inside than the outside. You don't want glue on the outside. And just set that on there. Making sure it's level and sticking on the bottom. And now that glue needs to be completely dry before we go on. All right, so off camera, I cut a few pieces of paper. This is two pieces of white cardstock. And then this is a strip. I didn't measure it, but it's approximately an eighth of an inch wide. That's what we want our finished width to be. You could use three layers of your good paper, but I figure I can, if I use just one layer of the good paper where it shows, it makes this a little more economical to make. I don't waste my good paper because I use that paper for a lot of stuff. So I'm just putting all three of these together so that I can have kind of a sandwich. So two pieces of white cardstock and then the piece of the decorative paper. And this needs to dry. I used glue stick. This will become my handle. So I'm going to let this glue dry, and when that's dry, I'll be back. All right, so the glue has had about an hour to get dry now. And I am going to try my best not to get off the edge of where I want to cut. The, we don't have to be super worried about exact size on this, it just so it's around an eighth of an inch. But we want it straight, and I went crooked there, but I don't need to use anywhere near all of this. I 
I only need a small portion. So I'm going to cut this off right here. And I'm going to trim it up where I didn't quite get it cut right. And there. Then I might cut it off. There. Now our next step, we need to make this round. I'm going to roll it around this paintbrush. Actually, I'm going to run the back of my scissors over it first. Because first, we need to soften this up a little bit. We've got three layers of paper plus the uh, glue in there. Now it came loose at the end, so I'm going to clip it past there. So now everything is glued together tight up there. Now I'm going to wrap it around my paintbrush. I want to get it started curving, and it is come unglued down there, but I don't think... Well, if that is affecting where I'm doing it, we can fix that later. We are now going to glue the top edge. So, a little dab of glue. And we want to glue the handle over this seam. This is where the seam comes together and our paper doesn't match there. So, that's way too much, but that's okay. We're going to put it, and you can put it either right next to the seam or over it. And I'm going to line it up right next to it this time so it's butted up against that overlap. Wipe off the extra glue. And this glue, I'm going to set it just a little bit. This glue needs to dry all the way. So give it a good hour or two minimum. Overnight's even better because we're going to pull against that when we glue it down to the bottom and we don't want to pull this loose. If we need to, we can fix. So we're going to have to do some fixing there, but I'll show you how to do that when we come back. All right, so this handle kind of split apart and that's okay. I'm going to show you how to fix it and I'm pretty sure the reason it split apart was it was really hot in here. When I glued this, and I think my glue stick probably got dried out. So we're going to make a handle about like that. And I make my handles on the doll mugs kind of oversized. So if we want to, we could slip them onto the doll's hand. So I'm going to cut this off above where that is glued together. I've just got a little bit of tacky glue here. And, oops, that did not go back on. I'll get it back on later. And part of a toothpick. Yeah, these came apart. Hopefully for you, yours won't come apart like this. But if they do, this is how you fix it. Because we want this glued together really well. We don't want this splitting. Sliding some tacky glue in there with a toothpick, a really thin layer. Alright, now make sure that you've got this all lined up really well and you've got it pulled really tight. We don't want any bubbles in our handle. And with the tacky glue, you've got a few minutes to get this all lined up. And that's not so. My, crap, I'm not staying under camera very well. Sorry, it's very early in the morning now, and I'm not really awake yet. All right, so we now have this all glued back. And we want this glue to dry before we try to do anything. So I'm going to set this aside and I'll be back later. All right, now that our handle is dry, we need to decide what shape handle we're going to put on. And typically, I just do a handle like this. Um, kind of push it down. And I like to make my handles a little oversized so that they can potentially be put on the doll's fingers. For this, I just need to get my glue working. 
and you'll probably have to hold this for a few minutes. Small dot of glue at the bottom or wherever your handle is going to attach and hold it on. And I recommend holding on to this for a while. If you have super glue on hand, I would say put a drop of super glue on with that tacky glue right in the same spot and that will hold it until the tacky glue dries. So this needs to dry. I'm going to trim it off even if I can. There. Now I'm going to keep my finger on this for a little bit and when this glue is dry we can start putting our finish on. Well, Once the glue on your handle is dry you need to go look over your mug really carefully. Make sure there's no like weird spots like okay here I've got I don't know if the camera's picking up but I've got a little bit of glue there that oozed out. I want to get that off if I can. I don't want to go into the paper but I want to get that evened up as best I can. Uh, nail file sometimes helps too. If you've got spots where your base paper is sticking over Get those off. If you didn't roll straight and you've got a little piece of paper sticking up on the top, get that off. Now we're going to make this look not like paper but like ceramic. And for this scale, what I like for that is triple thick. Triple thick is a gloss glaze, it's an acrylic base that so washes out of your brushes with soap and water. But it makes things look like ceramic. It, it is really thick. Some people hate the smell of this. I don't mind it. I don't think it's as bad as some of the other things I've used in the past. So, we're going to put out some. When I use a clear finish, I like a really soft brush. See how this brush is? It's really soft. It's fluffy. We're not going to do this all in one coat. What we're going to do is paint the outside sides of our mug I like to do that first because it's the pretty part and I want to see it first. If you're going to do any decorating on your mug, you would do it before this step, by the way. Uh, some of the ones I'll show you at the end of the video and I'll talk about on the blog, I used different decorative elements on and that was done just before I did this step. But for our basic mug, we are going to just this. And try not to pour out too much uh, triple thick in your cup or in your little container here so you don't waste a lot because you really can't put it back in. That's another advantage to doing several of these at once. So kind of look over and make sure you don't have any thick spots that are going to drip let this dry and wash out your brush. I would not recommend trying to hold this in the brush. Like Some paints I will wrap my brush in a wet wipe and just go back and use it, not with triple thick because it really gets hard. So let this dry for a while. When it's dry and no longer sticky, uh, we'll come back and do the next step. Alright, once this is no longer sticky, then we're just going to get just a tiny, tiny amount of the triple thick and I always put my triple thick into some kind of like this is a lid off of a bottle um, it you don't want to be working straight out of the out of your container because you could put contaminants in there and you don't want this running all over your tile sometimes with paint or glue I'll put it directly on the tile this stuff makes a mess there now that needs to dry and when that's dry we'll come back and do the next area. Alright now this is pretty much dry. It's a little damp at the bottom there but that's it. Now my handle sticks up above my cup. So this is one of the advantages of working on a ceramic tile. After I paint the bottom I'm going to hang it so the handle is off the edge. Again just a small drip and try not to shake your clear finishes because shaking them will get bubbles in them. Now, 
we're going to cover the entire bottom including where the sides and the bottom meet. Get a little bit more. I'm getting to the problem where I've got partially set up finish in there. Now set that so the handle hangs off the edge and I see I missed a spot. Ah, it was sticking to my finger. Okay, that needs to dry thoroughly because our next step we're going to flip it back right side up and we don't want this to stick. I'm working on a ceramic tile for a couple of reasons. Number one, I know it's a clean surface. I can clean it. It's got glue and paint on it now, but it's I can wipe it free. It's shiny so that this will come up. Even if I would accidentally turn it over and get it stuck to this, I could still get it off of here. And also, it's just a, it's raised up off my table, so like here, my handle can stick down past the edge. Also, it protects my table from whatever I'm doing. So I'm going to wash my brush again, and I'm going to let this sit a little longer between this step and the next one than I have in previous steps. All right, now that the bottom is dry, we are going to turn this over, and we're into the t inside of this in two steps. First, we're going to put just a little squeeze of triple thick in the bottom and since we have sealed the outside both with glue and with our outside coat of triple thick which is why we do the outside first this shouldn't leak what I'm doing I'm holding this so that I can see inside and making sure that the entire bottom is coated this does two things it makes the inside look nice and shiny also, it gives the bottom of the mug more weight because one of the struggles of working with doll size cut mugs made of paper, they're incredibly light and top heavy. By putting that little coat, and it's probably, I mean, it's not very thick. It's not even as thick as I have in this container where I was dipping into it. It just adds just enough weight that these are a little more stable. They don't tend to tip over. So that needs to dry for a while. When that's dry, then we'll put in some more inside and we'll brush it up the sides. And then we'll be done. All right, so this has had enough time that that triple thick has set up. So now I'm just going to kind of squirt a little more in here and use my brush. And don't worry if you have extra. The trick is getting this so you can actually see what you're doing. Coat the whole inside with triple thick and any excess will just drip down into the bottom and help add to that weighted bottom that we talked about on our last step. Make sure that the top rim is covered and you are basically done. This just needs to sit and completely dry. Be sure that your brush is cleaned up. When this gets completely set up, you can just use a toothpick or something to help you pull this out and your lid will be ready for next time. I actually keep this stored right with my triple thick. That way I've got it next time. So let me go wash my brush. I'll let this dry and I'll be back in a little bit. Alright, so here are all the mugs I've made this week. This is the one we just did on camera. And these are the rest I've been making over the last couple of days. I thought I'd quickly go over a little bit about them and then in the blog post I will try to put the dimensions of everything I used. So with the exception of this, all of these are done on the same piece of dowel. This one I used a slightly smaller piece of dowel on because I have a mug that I love. In fact, I have two of them. I got them on vacation. They've got a, they're tall and skinny like this, and they've got a ridiculously large handle, and I love them for a cup of tea while I'm reading in the winter. So that's what I did for this. It's kind of my inspiration on that one. I think it was a half inch dowel, but that information will be on the blog on the blog post. Um, this little rick racky thing is a metallic sticker. It's a border sticker I got at Dollar Tree. And the hearts are simply stickers. 
from Dollar Tree. Uh, put them on before you put the um, triple thick on and you can decorate. One thing I did not find though, be sure to check, word of advice, check your stickers by taking a small sticker off of the edge that you don't care about, put it on a piece of paper and coat it with triple thick because for this one I actually had some gorgeous stickers that were uh, Disney Frozen and the background page around the sticker matched this mug and I thought oh that would be so pretty oh I got a hair from my brush but I tested the sticker and the ink on that particular sticker ran really badly so I didn't end up using it I still love this paper I think this is gorgeous this is one it's a light piece of scrapbook paper it's just a paperweight so the mug itself is made all of white cardstock and then just the the one single strip of the colored. This is a sh the same dowel but the piece of paper was cut shorter just so that we would have some variation and I did the handle in a D shape rather than my usual hook or half heart. There's this one, the one we made on camera. This one's taller. I made it, I think it's the same height as, yeah it's the same height as this one but it's t so it's a taller mug and then this one I marked up a quarter inch from the top and the bottom of my long strip and then I cut two quarter inch strips that were also 12 inches long and after my initial mug was dry I just added these on and then worked with them all as one piece and then I happened to have this metallic sticker that I put on I thought that was kind of cool. I was initially not going to put that on, but then I found it fit, so I did. So those are the doll mugs. I will get some photos for you and give some dimensions and things. Remember, if you have any questions, just ask. If you have requests for future videos, let me know. I'd be happy to try and see what I can do. Be sure and check the blog post for more information, and be sure and check my Facebook page, uh, the link is in the description box. Hit the like button. It's the quickest way to get a hold of me. And I sometimes even give you guys some little teaser pictures of what we're going to do on the next tutorial. But until the next tutorial, have fun with your dolls, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.